Hello everyone, my name is Frank Panofen. I'm the Marketing Manager at Particle Measuring Systems and I would like to discuss today with you about some aspects of the new European GMP Annex 1 which has been recently released as a draft revision number 12 with comments uh, accepted from different organizations but not from singular persons. Um, my special aspect is today talking about continuous viable air monitoring and you know that uh, this is a very important aspect of our future pharmaceutical business. At the beginning, I would like to claim that this is my personal view and the view of my colleagues here at PMS. But of course, the interpretation that I'm giving here is cannot be used to defend any regulatory position or is no, has no legal implication and no legal re relevance. Therefore, it can be used for your own interpretation and understanding of this actual Annex 1. But of course, we as well know, know that this is a draft st still and uh, there is no legal implication at this moment of time. So environmental monitoring, we have a separate chapter now in the document. Um, this is the chapter number nine, which is all about the viable and non-viable environmental and process monitoring. This is a very special that we have a new chapter on environmental monitoring. And when you look into it, there is a clear understanding in the whole document that there is a differentiation around the qualification phase, which includes the classification as part of the qualification and the monitoring. Additionally, when we look into the general principles of the Annex 1, we understand that the quality risk management and actual state of the art means science must be, base, must be the base for all approaches to manage the final quality of a product. So in all the documents, it is understood that quality risk management, risk assessment and the scientific base of this risk assessment needs to be the base for, this, for the decision of what to do and how to do. Generally speaking on environmental monitoring, the general aspects of environmental monitoring are covered mainly in the chapter 9.5 to 9.7. So it is understo understood that Environmental monitoring is something that should be done during the full process and not only during the manufacturing uh, part of it. It should be as well done during pre preparation and dismantling. The locations and orientations uh, on this for environmental monitoring are to be determined by risk assessment. As stated previously, QRM is the base for everything. And of course, it is extremely important to, to deliver actionable data and not just data that cannot be used. And a very important aspect is that monitoring should never interfere with the process. It should use improved technologies and never have any influence of it. It's important uh, to understand this in order to choose the right technology at the right time. When we now have a look at the viable monitoring, we need to understand that the viable monitoring has changed. The viable monitoring is now considered to be frequent. Previously, you, get a, you got along maybe with singular sampling or non-frequent sampling. This is no longer the case. It even will go now to the continuous mode as, as I will explain in the next slide. And of course, there is no standard method now. There is multiple methods that are available in the field and these combinations of the right methods justified in a formal contamination control system by the methods and the principles of quality risk management and science should define which method you are using and what is the data that will come out. Be aware that airflow patterns may become a key decision parameter as well to justify which sampling method to be, to be used. There is another chapter, this is 9.26, that gives you the task to monitor not only in when manufacturing is happening, but as well in the vicinity, in the environment, in the associated rooms of the manufacturing operations, which means that you're going to sample in this area to manage the potential risk of incidents. 
to manage the risk where the microorganisms can enter from the outside into the core of your manufacturing. If you then find a problem, generally speaking, you will be assigning a kappa and to prove that the kappa was effective, increased sampling may be taken to verify that the kappa, kappa was really effective. You may increase not only the sampling volumes, times, but as well the sampling um, points that, that you can use. Now I come to the very important aspect, continuous viable monitoring. Viable monitoring in chapter 9.2.7 is considered to be, uh, from an air monitoring perspective, to be continuous and continuous sampling should be done. Now let's have a look at what are the what are the aspects of this. If we think about actual situations, viable air monitoring with snapshot sampling, like with 100 liter per minute, is no longer really accepted. Traditional methods can do continuous monitoring, and I will show you a solution in the next slide, but 100 liter per minute single snapshot sampling is no longer something that we, we should accept. And on the other hand, this regulation now gives you the chance to use settle plates as continuous monitoring. I'm against that. I really must say settle plates are not viable air monitoring. Settle plates is a measure for the surface contamination rate and do not measure the quality of air. There's multiple factors of air of air that will influence the settling parameters and the settling rate um, of viables airspeed flow pattern adhesion to surfaces and particle size particle deposition is a specific case and needs to be handled separately so do not consider settle plates as a measure for viable air, air monitoring we have published a paper in the PDA letter, and I would recommend you to check for this paper on our homepage, for example, and visit our webpage for a webinar that we have recorded on this aspect to understand why settling plates are not to be considered viable air sampling and should be replaced by continuous traditional air sampling. Please as well consider that the surrounding grade B, so grade B that is surrounding grade A, is now handled as grade A. Um, this is an increase in the stringent stringency of the of exactly this grade, and we need to understand that grade B becomes a very critical factor as well to monitor and to do a continuous sampling in this environment. So far, a lot of customers are doing only continuous sampling in grade A and not in grade B. So this needs to be reverted and changed if this draft comes true. Another aspect that I would like to trigger now is if you really want to have reliable and actionable data as determined previously, settle plates cannot be validated for quantitative results. So how can you really consider these data generated by settle plates as re reliable and create actions and kappas on it. This is something that people should better consider differently. Finally, I would like to give you a solution that particle measuring system is providing to you. One of the aspects is that we have the biocap single use and in a nice single use device that can sample up to two hours of uh, viable air actively. If you consider a whole manufacturing process starting from the pre preparation to the cleaning and dismantling, and this is now considered maybe to be an eight hour sampling, then you see that continuous particle measuring can be done during this time. If you would go to a 100 liter per minute sampling, you see a single sampling would just be a single snapshot and you will miss a lot of the interventions and critical aspects of the of the process. Even if you if you increase it to four times sampling or to 50 liter per minute, you would be having some difficulties to cover the whole process in reality. Moving more towards the 25 liter per minute and having multiple samples will definitely increase the chance of getting and covering the whole process and the chance of getting really problematic and incidences. But Finally, 
having a two hour sampling with a single use device will bring you to the point that continuous viable air monitoring is possible with traditional methods. So the BioCap single use is really optimized for the use in these critical areas. In the end, it will have reduced costs of quality with an extreme strong return of investment because you will, will, you will have no longer so many failures from settle plates that are considered to be false positives because settling plates are the major source of false positives. Alternatively and additionally, it is really compatible with the monitor uh, with modern manufacturing requirements like testing in isolator and wraps and has neutralizing capabilities for the environments of like VHP and antibiotics environments. So I would like to thank you for listening to my recording today for the webinar today. Um, I would like to draw your attention to our webpage www.pmeasuring.com. You can find there other webinars and other aspects on the new Annex 1 coming up soon and uh, already there. If you want to listen to other aspects of these new drafts and how we interpret them, there is another option to visit our Knowledge Center and listen to other webinars that have been recorded previously so that you can take the time to learn about our approach to environmental monitoring. Thanks a lot.